Usually, audiences coming out of a film not understanding it would mean that it was a colossal failure, but some filmmakers do pride themselves on confusing their audience, leaving it up to the audience to band together, discuss between themselves, and find something to take away from the experience. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movies you weren't supposed to understand. Number 10, Inherent Vice. The film is based on a novel of the same name by the famously infuriating author Thomas Pynchon, whose books are hard to get through because they're practically written in a way that dares the reader to keep on reading. So when one of his novels, Inherent Vice, was set to be made into a movie, people were not optimistic that the film would be easy to follow. This turned out to be an understatement, and many audience members found the movie so confusing that they actually just walked out of their screening. This drug-addled tale of Joaquin Phoenix's trouble private detective doc is genre obliterating, and the cast does do well to feed into the wacky and dreamlike storytelling. Still, anyone expecting a straightforward crime caper about a man investigating a disappearance will be left in the dust at this winding, surreal movie that doesn't care if the plot doesn't make any sense. It's the very definition of a piece of media motivated by vibes above all else, operating almost exclusively on stoner logic. Number 9. Inland Empire when Inland Empire, still David Lynch's last theatrical effort, was announced, fans were ready for another deep dive into the psyche of the film industry once again, hoping for another glamorous take on Hollywood similar to the then-recent hit Mulholland Drive. However, where Lynch's previous works had maintained an undercurrent of a traceable and coherent story, Inland Empire was the director let loose, a three-hour hodgepodge of confusing sequences and surreal non-sequiturs that had audiences rattled. The movie followed a young actress cast in a new film as the world around her seems to crumble and blend into the fabricated universe written into the pages of the script. And as you can imagine, things only get weirder and more dreamlike from there. Lynch staple Laura Dern gives a standout performance as the fictional actress in question, but her stellar performance did not make the movie's plot become any more tangible or palatable for its audience. Number 8. Synecdoche, New York this flick follows Caden Courted, an aging theatre director who, after being left by his wife and daughter, is given a grant to create an innovative piece of art. Faced with his own brutal mortality due mainly to his increasing ill health and loneliness, Caden spends the rest of his days putting together a surreal one-to-one -one set of New York filled with actors playing out the lives of the people closest to him in real life. It's a difficult film to follow from the off, as the reality of the play and the real world becomes interchangeable. And the core plot of making a simulated version of New York City spreads wildly out of control. Characters come and go, events shift depending on who's relaying them, and reality itself folds in around Caden's desire to finish the play. Still, despite how confusing it is, it is still great, and the character's desire for purpose and legacy is immensely relatable. Number 7. Enter the Void 2009's Enter the Void pushed Noah's abrasive style of filmmaking to the max, delivering a near three hour psychedelic trip all about out of body experiences. Thankfully, it at least has the courtesy of starting pretty straightforwardly, following a drug dealer in Tokyo who's gunned down by the cops about halfway through. It's in this second half where the movie just goes completely mad, with the character's spirit jumping through time and space, catching brief scenes from the lives of people he knows and people he doesn't. Of course, this is all presented in the the weirdest way possible, pushing the drug influences of the film to the max with assaults of music and colour. By the time you get to the finale, which partly takes you inside a vagina during sex, most people will have just given up trying to figure out what's actually happening anymore and give in to the fact that it's pretty much just supposed to be one bad trip. Number 6. The Killing of a Sacred Deer in The Killing of a Sacred Deer, Stephen Murphy is a doctor and father of two who starts a friendship with a young boy, Martin, whose father's death he's actually responsible for. Consequently, Martin tells Stephen that to pay for what happened to his father, Stephen must kill either his wife or one of his children, and if he doesn't, then, well, all three will die after suffering through three stages of an increasingly mysterious ailment. Now, if you didn't know from the title, which for the record I absolutely did not until after reading up on the movie, this flick is 
actually based on a Greek myth that shares a similar supernatural ultimatum. In the myth, of course, it's the gods' magic at play, but Yorgos Lanthimos' movie never gives a reason for the mysterious curse that plagues Stephen's family, and the audience is left confused as how such a thing could possibly happen. The thing is, though, that's not really important to the story. This isn't about Stephen trying to get out of the curse, but watching him take responsibility and make an impossible decision. Number 5. Annihilation we begin the movie believing that our protagonist Lena, with her scientific background and level-headedness, will be able to figure out and solve whatever is happening with the Shimmer, that being the landing place of a meteor that has caused a strange biological occurrence to begin in the surrounding area. But as this expedition gets more and more out of hand and Lena loses more of a grip on the situation, we too lose our grip on what on earth is going on. The reality inside of the Shimmer is fragmented and blurred. People, plants and things evolve and change and the DNA of our world is subject to change inside this shimmer, and we can only watch with fascination and confusion as Lena does. At least in that sense, our confusion perfectly mirrors Lena's own. However, when the end sequence ramps up to a point where absolutely nothing makes sense, we not only lose our own last semblance of understanding, but we also lose our protagonist as well. Number 4, Inception. Christopher Nolan's Inception is easily the most mainstream movie on this list, and likewise probably the easiest one to understand, but it still features one notorious intentional moment of ambiguity. Of course, the plot itself revolves around dreams within dreams within dreams. Essentially, it's a heist movie all taking place inside the subconscious of one man. It ends with main character Cobb being reunited with his children, but it's unclear if he's still in the dream world or back in the real world. Consequently, casual moviegoers and no and diehards alike have spent years puzzling over Inception's finale, and even actor Michael Caine had to ask the director what the film meant when they were shooting and still didn't get the desired explanation. Nolan himself over the years has been careful to give non-answers whenever asked directly about it, pointing out that the important thing is whether or not main character Cobb accepts the reality of the situation, not finding out for yourself whether that top stopped spinning. Number 3. Only God Forgives Nicholas Winding Refn's Drive was one of the most loved films of the 2010s. It was universally praised and everyone was excited for what the director was going to do next. However, where Drive had a simple and comprehensible plot that was easy to follow, Refn's later directorial entries were lacking that specific element, especially Only God Forgives, which played like an extreme reaction to everyone expecting it to be Drive 2. Refn seemingly bristled with the mainstream acceptance of his previous work, and set out to completely dash those expectations that he'd deliver a safe follow-up. For those expecting another drive then, what they got was a confusing style of a substance flick that reveled in the abstract. This was a mad ultra-violent movie that gave you hateful characters doing hateful things and backed it all up with an allegorical tough-to-follow plot. Number 2. Vivaria Vivarium follows Tom and Gemma, a young couple seeking to buy their first home. After work one night, they agree to view a house with a very strange real estate agent and find themselves trapped in the unusual neighborhood with no way to escape. The movie then ramps up to a completely new level of weird when a baby is left on their doorstop with the instructions that they can leave if they raise the child. This horror movie is extremely bizarre, and as we watch the child grow up supernaturally fast, our main couple gets weaker and weaker. Eventually, the movie ends with Tom and Gemma dying and the child, now fully grown, returning to the estate agents to replace the one we met right at the beginning. The script, however, gives us no explanation for the film's events or the strange alien race of men that we see throughout, and the audience is left with so many questions, including, what the hell did I just watch? Number 1. The Lighthouse about two lighthouse keepers going mad together with a healthy dose of Lovecraftian cosmic horror thrown in for good measure, the hour and 50 minute runtime is full of confusing visuals due to the characters' own constant delusions and hallucinations. The characters themselves spend most of the film pissed up in kerosene as well, making little sense and slowly losing all concepts of reality. The audience too will feel like they're just as drunk as well, as the director invites us to revel in the same madness, putting us in the same headspace as the characters as they lose themselves to delusions 
illusions of mermaids, cosmic entities in the light itself, and a storm that threatens the entire island. Everything is supposed to confuse, unsettle, and even occasionally make you laugh above all else, so don't worry too much about getting it. So that's our list, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. How many of these movies have you seen, and are there any confusing ones that you think deserve a spot on this list? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.